Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to Oak City's Wednesday night Bible study. We are so blessed to have everyone here. Uh, thank God for allowing us to see another day that was not promised. Um, just a faithful God. He is such a keeper. Um, at this time, we are going to have a prayer by uh, Mama D. Shall we bow? Heavenly Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we want to thank you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your great grace, God. We thank you for your patience, your long suffering, your kindness, your gentleness with us, God. God, we thank you that you're faithful. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to the cross <clears throat> to pay that sin debt, God, that we owe, God, but he knew we could not pay, Father God. And we thank you that we have redemption in the shed blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come back and give your name, praise, honor, and glory. God, I ask that you have blessed everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God. Meet every need, Father God. Help us to always know that you are with us, Father God. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we experience, we are never alone because you are a faithful Father. God, we ask that your will and your way be done in this service on tonight, God. Father God, bless our leaders on tonight. Bless the man of God that will bring the word. God, bless us as participants to participate, Father God to have open hearts, to hear the word, God, receiving ears, Father God, and God, let us be faithful to go out and share with a dying world where our hope, our faith, our trust, and our confidence is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll be so careful to give your name, the praise, down and the glory that is due. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. At this time, we are going to have a scripture by uh, Evangelist Robin Ladd. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to Romans 8, verse 1, and then go to verse 14. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, we may be also glorified together. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that uh, scripture. All right. I'm not sure who's singing tonight, but I'm sure you know who you are by this time. So if you would come off mute and sing your selection. Praise the Lord. I'll just jump in uh, unless anybody has a song on their heart. <laughs> I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up. Till I lay in my head, I can sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I can sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led us through some fires in darkest night. You've been close like no other. We know you as a father, 
Know you as a friend. We are living in the goodness of God. Because all my lives you have been faithful. Yes, you have. All my lives you have been so, so good. With every breath that we are we can sing of the goodness of God. We can sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm so dead now. I give you everything, oh Lord. Your goodness is running after, it's running after to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, oh Lord. Your goodness is running after, keeps running after. To me, with our lives laid down, we surrender now. We give you everything. Cause your goodness keeps running after, keeps running after us. Your goodness keeps running after, keeps running after us. Your goodness keeps running after. Keeps running after us. Man. Amen. And his goodness surely <laughs> runs after us. We thank God for such a faithful, faithful father. All right. Um, that's a great segue into our uh testimony uh service. I know this is everyone's favorite, favorite part of service. And so um Y'all come off me one at a time now, okay? I don't want everybody talking over each other. So uh, <laughs> you have the floor now to uh, share of the goodness of God because I know he's been good to every single one of us on this call. So uh, now's your time. Okay. Well, all right. Well, first of all, um, thank God for allowing us to see another day that was not promised. I know I always say that a lot. And I think we do um, take that for granted sometimes. I mean, with all the storms that go on, I mean, there's a car wreck every day. You know what I'm saying? So God has kept us in those times. And so I think, you know, we should in these moments when we have an opportunity to just thank him, just, you know, we should just be eager to just be like, no, I thank God for this. I thank God for that, you know. So I'm going to give you all another chance <laughs> to come off mute and share of the goodness of your father who has kept you from danger seen and unseen. Amen. You know, now that you say that, at least I was thinking how many times I just thank the Lord um, that I haven't, uh, I've seen a lot of accidents. I drive about 35 to 40 miles. Uh, every day going to work and I haven't been involved in any accidents uh, actually major accidents and uh, I drive 75 miles to church in Miami and, uh, and back uh, another 75 miles of course but I can't tell you how many times I've I've stopped I've gone back inside the house or like one time I was leaving church in Miami and I went to the car I got, the, got in the car and then I thought you know I think I should pray one more time before I leave. So I went back inside the church into the office and prayed. And then um, went back out to the car. And so I was about, I guess about, not long, probably about five minutes, maybe six minutes, seven minutes. Anyway, so going home, um, I had, there was a car turned over on the highway. Uh, police officers were not there, no emergency things there yet. And um, I said, you know, I wonder if that five to seven minutes was something that kept me from that. 
and uh, even going to work sometime, I've gone, I've gotten to an accident right after it happened. <laughs> like literally, there was no, I could tell you how many times there was no emergency vehicle there yet. And uh, people getting out of a car and people don't stand on the side. And I thought a few minutes early, a few minutes later, I could have been right here in this thing. And, but when I get there, I always thank God. Is, uh, I don't know what you did this morning. You know, kept me from going back in the house, taking out trash, whatever. How do you orchestrate the whole thing? He just blessed me around it. And I just thank God for it because, you know, there have been, I don't know, like one or two, there have been several, several fatalities uh, that, I, that, that I passed by in the morning. And, and uh, I mean, one time it was the, a big 18 wheeler turned over and fell off the bridge and, and caught on fire. And all the lanes were locked. All lanes were locked. We just fire, everything was fired, melted the uh, asphalt. You know, I go back today, and I still see what had to repave the whole, you know, interstate. And, um, and but that was my route, you know. But the bridge went up that day, or, or the train came by. I mean, I was delayed. And I try to try to. I know what time the bridge goes up, and I always try to race and get past it. And sometimes it catches me. <laughs> I don't know what God's protecting me from because I timed it just right where I could get there before the bridge goes up. But when it catches me, I don't. I just stay right there and say, I don't know what God is doing, but he's doing something. So I, I, I appreciate your testimony because so many times God is leading us around things and preventing things from happening to us. And we pass by and say, ooh, that, that wasn't me. No, it was supposed to be you. <laughs> you know, but God wouldn't let it happen. So I, I thank God for that. Uh, it happened this morning too. I mean, I saw it this morning and I thought, wow, you know, once again, you know, there's no police officer, no ambulance, but this car, these cars are wrecked, blocking the highway. I'm thinking, that could have been me, but you know, God just didn't let it happen. So I just thank God for that. I appreciate your testimony because uh, I think we just need to be, have our antenna up and just just enough to see things going on that did not happen. Um, you know, I ain't I haven't found any money. I haven't, you know, ran something nice. You know, just God just protect me from certain things. And we got to just give God the glory for those things. And, and we see it all the time. We see it all the time. And just uh, when we get to see it, there's no reason in the world not to just thank you for it. So I appreciate the testimony. Just reminded me of that because this morning I was thanking God for it, but I don't talk about that. Uh, but he just protects us from so many things. You know, like in the uh, uh, grandma, he used to always tell us, you know, kept us from danger, seen and unseen. You know, and it's like, uh, sometimes you get to see them and sometimes you don't. Uh, most of the time, I, I don't think we do. <laughs> I think I don't think we do. That noise was something, but it, you know, what was that noise? I don't know. <laughs> But it was something, you know. But you know, God uh, wouldn't let it uh, uh, wouldn't let it succeed. He made it all fail. So I, I think thank God for testimony because there's so much that God has done that we don't even know about, but He's done it. Yeah, man, for sure. <laughs> I find myself in those things. It's like it seemed like I got caught by every red light, and it's just like, okay, it was a reason. Let me just relax, and then it all down the road, it's a wreck. It's like. I wonder if I would have got all green lights, would that have been me? But God. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry. So <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey man, y'all, y'all actually reminded well, DeAndre, uh, we got in a we got in a, I guess you could call it a fender bender on the way home from church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, somebody hit us, uh, they were traveling too close and mm -hmm. the traffic came to a, a, a stop and mm -hmm. they hit us. It wasn't hardly any damage or anything, so we just let them let them go. But, but I mean, God protected. It could have easily been more. I mean, mm -hmm. so you know, we're kind of compact. Yeah. We're kind of compact in that that car. Luckily, it was a smaller, you know, a smaller car. And uh, <laughs> um, but but God, like like, yeah. and, and, and and there's Bible for for God protecting us from things that we can't see. You know, if you look at like Balaam and the donkey, you know, and uh. You know, I mean, there's an angel with the sword drawn, you know, mm -hmm. and the, donkey, donkey, the donkey sees it with the, the, the man is, you know, blind to it. And uh, and he's beating the donkey and the donkey's talking to him and, he, and, and and he was so delirious trying to get to that money. He's talking right back to the donkey like it's a man, you know, and uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, yeah, we we definitely don't see we don't see near. Mm -mm. much as as much as we do see and recollect and understand mm -hmm. you know amen. i mean we just don't get it <laughs> amen. amen yeah god protects us from ourselves in that way too you know he knows what pitfalls we will fall into what, what yeah. the temptation we would be mesmerized by i mean he, he 
I mean, just so many different things. So, yeah, he deserves a hearty amen, a hearty thank you, because he is a keeper. Like uh, Elise said earlier, he is a keeper. Amen. He's just faithful. You know, I was thinking, too, uh, while you were talking there, that um, that I, I know that, you know, I love to fly. I used to be scared to fly. I used to pray like crazy before I got my plane. And um, I guess about probably 10 years ago, I was just like, so maybe 15, 20 years ago, I just started really loving it. I just love the idea of flying. I just just love it. And um, But I, I don't pray nearly like I used to pray like on a plane. I, I, just, I was taking it like God's going to take me up and God's going to take me down. I don't have any problem. And I always tell people if it's fucking and bumpy, I always just go to, I mean, I go to sleep. I mean, I literally, if it's rocky, I go to sleep. And uh, Pastor Bobby was talking, I guess, a few weeks ago about, you know, he still prayed, just fly, you know. And I thought, do I pray every time I fly? I said, I don't think I really say another prayer when I get ready to get on the plane. And I thought, I should start doing that again. Just like, you know, because it's not, I can't, I, I, am I really taking it for granted? Or I just like trusting in God? No, I think I'm really taking a lot for granted. I'm trusting him, but I really think I'm just taking it for granted that God's going to do it. And he does do it. Uh, but, you know, I just went back to, so, you know, praying, like, I don't know, you know, I, I can't just trust this pilot. Uh, but the, uh, the uh, and then uh, one of the flights I took uh, just recently, <laughs> they uh, got on and the pilot said, okay, uh, yes, sir, I know I'm not even watching this weather, but it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a lot of turbulence. In fact, um, I think it was flying to Atlanta time. And he said, uh, and we're not going to have any cabin service. I've told the flight attendants to sit down before we take off. To not take their seatbelts off. We're not going to be <laughs> serving any water or nothing. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Now, I've never heard someone say that. I mean, I heard them say, you know, okay, we're going to have to take their seats. But not before the plane even took off. They said, we're not even take a chance. I said, man, I don't know if I should be on this plane. You know, I don't, you know it was that bad because I've never heard that before. And I said, okay. Well, I'm glad I started praying before I got on this plane nowadays. And uh, again, and uh, it was the smoothest ride. <laughs> it was, it, I mean, there was not one hint of turbulence. And not, it was like one of the smoothest rides ever. And I thought, wow, did the weather move? I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, I go, God said, I was really like getting anxious. And I hadn't been anxious by flying since I can remember. But that day I got anxious. And God let me know, uh, I, you know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, no, 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 I got this, you know, I, I got this. And, and he did. And uh, it was just beautiful because I know that was a, I know that was a, 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 a answer to prayer because I did not, I didn't, I never heard that and I didn't want to go through it. <laughs> you know, I just don't want to go through that kind of thing. And, uh, and God just did something. Someone said, God moved. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> God, God moved. And uh, it was such a blessing, though. I, I, I just thank God for it. And I, and I know, I guess the point of this was kind of going back to, I think that part of what Lisa was saying, we do take a lot of things for granted. Waking up in the morning, we take a lot for granted. You know, um, I, I I know personally, when I wake up, I first time before I get off the pill, I just thank God for this day that I, I woke up. I mean, because I've, I've had people, I've known people at in in, in my office who, uh, well, two, so I've been here three years two people in my office um, didn't wake up in the morning. What happened then? You know, oh, uh, his wife found him dead in the bed. And so I know, oh, his, his wife found him dead. I said, really? Didn't wake up, didn't wake up. They were looking for him to work. Wife was in, in New York, she had to fly home. What, what, what happened? When she got home, he was in the bed there. You know, so it was like, we didn't find out till a day later that he was in the bed there. You know, it was like that kind of thing. So we just like, you know, that could be me. That could be any of us. But God allows us to get up in the morning and uh, can't take it for granted. And God just does way, way too much, way too much too often for not to thank him. And uh, so I'm kind of making that for mine right now, but uh, I'm, I'm going to stop. But y'all go ahead. <laughs> He's a great guy. <laughs> yes, he is so good. Anybody else got a testimony? Now, I know after hearing all that, I know all y'all want to come off mute at the same time. Let's do one at a time. <laughs> Okay, nobody else wants to tell her the goodness of God. All right, we are going to turn it over to the speaker for tonight. Um, I'm not exactly sure who it is. Um, hey, before we get the speaker, can y'all hear me? Yes. I just want to, um, this is Cynthia, my mom's phone. We're in the car. 
hair on the brain today. Totally forgot about Wednesday. But anyway, <laughs> um, when she when Daryl was testifying, <laughs> Mama was in the, over here in the passenger seat calling on Jesus. <laughs> Wow, he's testifying about that plane. And the thought came to me, if she hadn't called on Jesus all those years over her babies before now, where would we be? <laughs> I just Amen. praise God for a prayer Amen. mother and that she's been oh. calling on Jesus Amen. up until now. And then, and even now still during the testimony. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, I just thank God for a praying mother. Amen. I mean, there's a whole lot of things I can thank God for, but her over here whispering Jesus doing that testimony. I said, I, yeah. let me, I said, Mama, let me see your phone for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and you know, funny you say that, Cynthia, because I know sometimes, you know, that if, uh, and me personally, maybe you too, but sometimes we feel a certain closeness to God where you you know you're right in tune with Him. And sometimes different stretches of our lives may feel like we, we don't have that closeness. And I know I've gone through a part where I didn't have the closeness I know. And sometimes I feel like I'm not even worthy to, to, to pray right now. And, and I remember getting on a plane thinking just like that. I'm being embarrassed to call to the Lord right now. You know, I've been acting up and carrying on. And, um, but the thing that got me is that, well, I know mama prayed for me this morning. I, that's my exact words to say, I know mama prayed for me this morning. She calls everybody's name out. She does. I, I do know that. It takes a long time. And I said, I'm, I'm going to go with mom's prayers. And I said that, I remember saying that many times. Then we're going with mom's prayers because I know those prayers are heard. I know they've already been up. And uh, I gave me some some confidence and hope that those prayers uh, went for the Lord and uh, they were answered. And I know they, they still are answered. So I thank God for that. So thank you, Cynthia, for acknowledging that. But um, yeah, amen. 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 Oh, y'all waiting on me? I'm sorry. Did y'all did you turn over me? I'm sorry. I was waiting for the thing. Thank God for the service I've I heard so far. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Be my lovely wife. And, uh, uh, word to the wise: Walmart is having some kind of crazy special, three dollars for all these clothes and things. So, uh, if y'all need some sweatsuits and shirts and whatnot, I just I got some good news. You know, I got a whole new wardrobe for forty-two dollars. <laughs> so, I mean, I got like eight shirts and nine sweatpants and a sweat and a sweater and i spent 42 dollars. i'm blessed so word to the wild so thank uh, god tonight for everybody the testimonies and whatnot thank god i heard the praying mama i thank god for praying mama you know the, our, our kids mom's kids and dad's kids we have no excuse they taught us to pray they taught us early to call them no kids. excuse no excuse i remember even when we went to work at the mills and uh uh daryl was a dishwasher before he started running the place <laughs> he, he uh he uh, was uh, trying to, I don't know what has happened. There was a shortage in the dishwasher, and Daryl was had his hands underwater, and the um, the power shot through the water, and Daryl couldn't move his hands, so he's been electrocuted. And he called on Jesus, and uh, and and that, and that electricity had to back off and let his hands go. Now, Amen. His Amen. Name was greater than the force Amen. of that current. Yes, Amen. So I, I remember Amen. being in, in um, college, and I was riding my bike, and I, I was riding my bike uh, around campus and I rode away from campus. This, this is the Ragno neighborhood. And and on the corner, I saw a whole bunch of rags, just brown and white rags. I said, that's a crazy looking bunch of rags. I rode near it and it was a big old St. Bernard laying there instead of a pile of rags. And he rose up and came to me and I said, Jesus, that thing backed away from me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Some say it was a volume, and, 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 and it was the fact I screamed, but I, I think it was power in the name. So I Amen. Think, uh, That's what it was. Yeah. Um, Amen. You could have whispered. So, <laughs> so tonight, I kind of want to stay with the Book of Romans, and um, I've been trying to get to verses chapter eight, verses one through five, um, and uh, and we keep going back through it. It's so every time you go back through it, it's so rich, and there's so many more things to pull out. And in my opinion, now this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Romans is the most theologically significant book in the entire New Testament. Uh, it is the only book that explains everything. Uh, everything else, uh, they, 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 will, they will admonish, other books admonish, you know, don't kill, don't steal, uh, live holy. Uh, Romans is the only book that explains step by step how things work. Um, for example, uh, Ephesians tells us, don't, don't steal. Uh, let him that stole steal no more. 
and 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 uh, First Corinthians, you know, gives minds from good sin. Romans is the only book to tell you why you why you sin, <laughs> why you have a you know sin nature, and, and and this is why you carry on, because Paul had never been there, so he had to explain everything, and and it's, it's just to me it's the most theologically significant book in the entire New Testament, and um, and every book has different values. It seemed like the Holy Spirit worked on these writers for different purposes. So when you read the book of Matthew, for example, you see all those references to the Old Testament. And you can see clearly that that was intended to be a gospel for Jews uh, because the Gentile would understand all those Old Testament Old Testament references. Then you look at um, you look at John and, and it doesn't have all that, but it has a lot of the words of Jesus. It seems to be written to unbelievers. And when you read the last chapter of John, he says these things are written that you might believe and that by believing you might have life. And so it seems like John is written to unbelievers. Hebrews is written to Jewish believers, clearly. Talks about the law, uh, then and grace. And the priests and the high priest and the sacrifice and the pairs of all of Jesus. A Gentile wouldn't understand that. It's written to Jewish believers. Uh, James is written to Jewish believers. First and second Peter written to Jewish believers. Uh, Romans is written to both Jewish and um, uh, and Gentile believers. Uh, and so when you look at the Bible, uh, each book has a purpose. And then you look at books like First John and Jude, you know, when, you know, one chapter, some of them, and two and three chapters, and they just have, they they write for specific purposes. Uh, Philemon. Uh, Paul just uh, telling the owner to receive a runaway slave because he's a believer now. And and so those books don't have the theological value. It's all the word of God. So some people say you can't compare books and this and that, but they, it's all the word of God. But th different books had different purposes. When you read about Philemon and, and Paul telling uh, 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 one of the saints to receive this slave back, it just doesn't have the theological value that the book of Romans has. It has all the all the word of God in it. Yes, but... It's different purposes. So the Holy Spirit had different purposes in mind. But Romans is a book that is significantly, in my opinion, uh, makes a significantly higher contribution to our theological understanding, more so than any other book in the New Testament, uh, in the Bible, for example. So we go through it slowly, and each time we go through, we, we, we find more and more. So I began trying to, uh, I've been trying to get to verses uh, Romans 8, 1 through 5 uh, during uh, our first service. And, uh, and, and saints, by the way, here's the way I look at that. Uh, here's where I look at that first service. 10:30 service. I look at that as a service. And so, if we have people that want to come and they don't like to get out late, let's not uh, begrudge them. If some people want to come to 10:30 to 11:30 and go home and watch and thank them for coming, and if other people want to come to 11:30, the service that gets out around one, people when they when if they want to leave at the first service, say thank you for coming. See you next Sunday, God willing. Amen. Amen. So, so what I'm going to try to do in that first service is uh, get through uh, verses 8, chapter 8, verses 1 through 5, viewing and reviewing and reviewing. But I need to get this ingrained uh, in, in everybody that, that, that the value of this book lies in the fact that Paul had never visited there. So he has to explain things to people he has never seen. So um, uh, let's see, the internet is breaking up. Is the microwave, I got to know here. Is the microwave on? Maybe somebody's microwaving. Hang on a second. You got it. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that note. I think the uh, microwave baby may be interfering with the connection. We're going to check on that before we go further. But you can open your Bibles to Romans 7. And we've been through this multiple times, but but it's, it's so rich. Romans is so rich. And, and, and to me, it's the most undersung book uh, uh, in the New Testament. Uh, we love Acts, for example, and I love Acts. And uh, it's, 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 you know, it's where the church started. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's where the church started. It's, it's where the Holy Spirit fell. It's where God indwelled man permanently for the first time. It's just a book full of power. And so, um, but when you look at um, Acts, you can't even understand what, what goes on in Acts if you don't understand Romans. You, you can't even put all those examples and make a uniform gospel. You can't make a uniform doctrine uh, just looking at Acts. You have to go to Romans and say, ah, that's why I work. For example, in Acts uh, 10, at the house of Cornelius, uh, when the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles, they hadn't been baptized. Uh, and, and, and so were they saved? Hadn't been baptized. Yeah, of course they were. You can't have the Holy Spirit and be lost. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was to make you the, the child of God. So they received the Holy Spirit first, then they got baptized. Well, Romans explains why they were saved. Uh, they heard the gospel and believed, and, and they were justified based on what was in their heart, and God gave them the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, in, in Acts, um, Acts 19, Disciples of John, um, they had not even heard about the Holy Ghost, had not heard about the Holy Spirit. 
and uh, and they said, and to, uh, go to go to uh, Acts nineteen real quick, mm -hmm. and start reading at verse one. And it came to pass that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, mm -hmm. came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them. Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon, upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And so here we have people who followed the pattern that was laid out in Acts 2. Uh, Paul told them kind of, uh, you, you only got half his story. Um, they baptized him, and then Paul laid hands on him, okay? And that's how the Holy Spirit came upon them. In Acts 2, the Holy Spirit fell from heaven. In Acts 10, the Holy Spirit fell from heaven. In Acts 19, Paul laid hands on them, and so uh, and they received the Holy Spirit. And so uh, when we look at these examples and try to make doctrine out of it, and, 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 and you go to Acts 8 real quick, go to Acts 8 real quick. This is Philip and the eunuch. And find verse says, again, the same verse, he, he preached unto them, preached unto him Jesus. 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And, and this is the eunuch. He was reading Isaiah 53. Okay. And so Philip, and he said, he said, he's reading about the passage at uh, Pastor John. Oh, Pastor John, you gave a marvelous altar call Sunday. Thank God for that. Um, but anyway, uh, this passage, uh, Pastor John read on 53, uh, Isaiah 53. This is what the eunuch was reading. He didn't know anything about Jesus. He had an Old Testament. He was reading it. The Lord sent Philip there, and he asked, uh, Philip said, do you understand what you read? The guy says, how can I understand? Uh, and um, I got an amen on that altar call, too, by the way. <laughs> it's, on, it's in the chat. Um, and he, and Philip began with the same scripture, Isaiah 53. He was wounded by transgression, bruised by iniquities. I know I'm talking fast, but y'all y'all familiar with the story. And, and the eunuch asked Philip, well, what can I, how can I understand this testament, this testament teach me? Then Philip began at the same trip to preach them to Jesus. Read. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So Philip apparently preached baptism to the man because the man didn't know what baptism was. Philip must at some point told him, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, we don't know the exact discourse, but, but the guy says, well, here's water. Uh, I can be baptized in. So uh, in preaching Jesus to the man, Philip covered baptism. So, I mean, it's kind of part and parcel. And so, and then, go ahead. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. This is the part that skipped over when this story is told. Philip would not let this man be baptized until he believed with all of his heart. We would not know Amen. why. Amen. We would Amen. not know why if it weren't for Romans. Amen. Now, 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 go to Romans 10. Amen. Amen. And, and, what, and what does Eunuch say, by the way? What does Eunuch say, by the way? What was his response? Uh, and he answered and said, mm -hmm. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Y'all feel me? You understand me? Now go to Romans 10. Go to Romans 10. Or with and the heart. An act, and that's an act. <laughs> that's an act. That's an act. Yeah. Now, with the heart. I want the verse says, with the heart, man. Okay. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Uh, back up one word. One verse. Uh -huh. Back up. Uh -huh. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus uh -huh. and shalt believe in thine heart that now, heart. God uh -huh. hath raised him from the dead, yes. thou shalt be saved. Uh -huh. For with the heart man believeth. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Resulting in. Now don't mess with me in this Greek. Resulting in. Unto. Resulting in what? Righteousness. Righteousness. The, the easiest way to understand this is with a man, with a heart, man believeth, uh, resulting in righteousness. Some, some, see, if you don't know Greek, you say, well, unto righteousness. You don't get righteousness right there. No, 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 baby. Now, 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 don't, don't, don't make me go, <laughs> don't make me go into Greek on you. <laughs> this is with the heart, man believing, resulting in righteousness. And what? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth, confession is made, resulting in salvation. You, you, you can't get around this. And that's why this guy had 
to, to confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in his heart before he baptized him. Otherwise, he's going to go down a wet sinner. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he's going to go down a dry sinner. They used to say, come up a wet sinner. With wow. The, <laughs> man, believe it unto right. And with a mouth, confession is made to salvation. And so uh, we wouldn't even understand that we're not from Romans. So God did not allow uh, Paul to go to Rome. Um, and, uh, and, and you know what's beautiful about this, uh, about the Bible, is all one. See, we don't have to run from, we don't have to run from Scripture. You know, I, I've been, honestly, can I say this? I've been in some churches where they run from Romans. They don't like Romans 10. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They don't like Romans 10. If they had their way, they would cut that, that book out the Bible because it don't fit the doctrine. Y'all just will say amen. Just will say amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we don't, we don't run from Scripture. We embrace Scripture. We come to yeah. an understanding. And we grow and we learn and all of God's word is good. Amen. All of God's word, every word. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word. So we we just have to understand how it fits. And Mother Doty meant well, but she was wrong. And so we grow and we understand and, 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 we, and we move forward. And, 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 and it, you know, I, <laughs> I was going on now. You know, the people that taught us holiness, you know, I got saved in, uh seven let's see 60 years ago what would what year would that have been 1968 no that was before that i got saved when i was seven so 60 years ago 65. 64 right okay so and, and and the people that taught me holiness i mean they live right uh, they live better than we live y'all ain't saying nothing they they, mm -hmm. they didn't go to movies they didn't they didn't they didn't they didn't watch stuff on TV. They barely would watch the news. They, they fasted every Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. then, they, then they had sleep in. They prayed. They didn't do nothing, you know, and uh, they lived holy. Uh, and so I grew up in that environment. So, I, I mean, these were God, and they, and they raised, I mean, they lived. I mean, we talked, but they lived it. Yeah. And, uh, and I got a lot of respect for how they lived. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, um, I mean they, they, I'm talking about true holiness. I'm talking about saints that just didn't play. I, I mean... <laughs> At one point, I know a preacher. We were playing basketball, and 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 he just didn't believe you should be playing ball, and he 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 and he wouldn't touch the ball, and wanted to play just 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 wanted to please God, and but we came to a better understanding these days. We 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 you know we 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 learn, we grow, we find it's okay to play a little basketball. You know, it, it's okay. Uh, to watch TV, if you just watch, watch what you watch, and, and, and so, and, and God is way more concerned about your heart than your biscuits and eggs. So you don't have to fast three days, uh, but it's okay to fast. Uh, and, and and so you 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 see God, and you put Him first, and so we, we grow and we learn. But one of the things we we need to learn is 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 that the whole Bible is intended for us. It all fits. There's no contradiction. So we don't have to run from there's no scripture we will not run that we will run from and there's no scripture we will not embrace. All we do is put it in proper context. Amen. Amen. So we're on our way to Romans 10. We haven't gotten there yet. I, I gave you a little taste of it. But we need this understanding because we want to save souls. Amen. So in, in getting to Romans 10, we got to pass through Romans 8, which is my favorite chapter in the Bible. Romans 8, my favorite cha chapter in the Bible. Romans, my favorite book. My favorite verse is not in this chapter. And my, my favorite verse is, is, is in the, anybody, anybody, I got a quarter here for outside of my family. Does anybody know what my favorite, but what the pastor's favorite verse is in the Bible? Outside of my family. My favorite, does anybody know what book it's in? Can, right. I, can I guess the book? Yes. My guess would be Hebrews. You got it. It's in Hebrews. In Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. We're we going to find the pastor's favorite verse. Read that. Then we're going to go on with his lesson. Hebrews 9. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got it? All right. Begin reading. We begin at verse 13. Okay. Read. For yeah. if the blood of this is, he, is, this, is this is Hebrews nine thirteen, uh, okay. Read. Who's who's got it? John. John. John got it. You got it, John. Who's got it? Uh, actually, I don't. Okay, go ahead, baby. Okay. For if the blood of bulls. For if the blood of bulls and goats. And the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it. And if the ashes of a heifer sprinkling unclean sanctify the blood of bulls and goats. 
and the ashes of a heifer sanctified to the purifying of the flesh to the purifying of the flesh how much more how much more shall the blood of christ shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot offered himself without spot to god to god purge your conscience purge your conscience from dead works from dead works to serve the living god to serve the living god somebody say amen 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 if the blood of bulls and goats did the job in the old testament how much more hey. tell the blood of jesus christ who offered himself yeah. without, without spot to God, purge your conscience yeah. and called you to serve the true and living God. Amen. I shouldn't even read my favorite verse. I'm ready to preach now. <laughs> but I'm, try, I'm, trying to get my, I'm trying to get my favorite chapter. And, and saints, like I said, uh, all of us have come along, all of us grew up in holiness. We came along the same way. We, we grew up fast and praying. I know I didn't go to movies. I, they, they taught me it was sinful. My 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 grandmother, bless her heart, you know, said the Lord, what what the Lord come while you're in there watching that movie? She was letting you know the Lord wouldn't 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 wouldn't, wouldn't rapture you up out the movie theater. You know, you gonna have to say stay there and go through the tribulation. <laughs> and so so we didn't go to movies. You know, Lord might come, but um, and then my you know I had a pastor didn't allow us to play basketball. And of course, my mother, you know, mitigated a lot of that. She taught us. Uh, I remember one time I'll say this, and and this is a long introduction, but um. I, uh, my pastor, when I grew up in holiness, taught us that playing ball was wrong because Israel ate and then rose up to play. That was his scriptural basis for that, but, <laughs> which had nothing to do with baseball. But um, I played some baseball one day, and then I dreamed I was burning in hell. Uh, and, and, and I woke up, you know, and I was, and my mother comforted me. I was 13 years old. And uh, I said, Mama, I, I said, I like to play baseball and basketball, but I guess it's a sin. And she says, and she told me it's not a sin. And this, this was, the pastor told me the sin. My mother explained me it's not a sin. She says, you're a child. She says, be a child. He says, there's going to come a day uh, when you put away childish things. And she read to me, when I, the, the passage that uh, Elder Art read uh, from 1 Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I thought I was a child, I did as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. She said, you're a child. Be a child. Enjoy your ball. Be a child, and one day you'll put away childish things. So I thank God, and then I was able to go play basketball and baseball after that with with, with a clear conscience. Didn't dream I was going. To, as a matter of fact, I started dreaming I was going to heaven after that. Play a good game of baseball, dream I was going to heaven. So I thank God for my mom. It's already been testified. All right, but I said all that to say this: the ones that raise up and hold this, I have nothing but the utmost respect for them. Nothing but the utmost respect. And I think in, in our teaching uh, and, and preaching, God God allows us to grow. We get to learn. And back then, a lot of a lot of us, and frankly, in the '60s, they, we couldn't go to college. They they run you out and hang you. Let alone go to seminary and learn you know, learn some Greek and learn context and learn hermeneutics and homiletics. No, no, no. But all that access is open to us, and God has allowed us to come along. So we can look back and say, well, they meant well, but we can see a little clearer now. Uh, not that we understand more, no more, but God has blessed us to have more access to resources and we've been able to get uh, some understanding on things. It's okay to play baseball. You know, it's not a sin to go to a movie. You just have to watch what you watch. Amen? Amen. But if you believe it's a sin, then it's a sin. Amen? If you believe it's a sin, it's a sin. That's the that's Bible. We're not teaching that tonight. All right, so we're going to come back to Romans 7. How are we doing on time? I've talked a long time for this introduction. Whew. 15 minutes left for the lesson. Let's go. Let's go quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> Romans uh, 7. Romans 7. Mm -hmm. Romans 7. And we've been explaining Romans. I want to get to chapter 10. I want to go to chapter 10, 10 slowly so we'll come to an understanding. And this is teaching that the church needs. The church really needs a teaching. Because we can't run from scripture. We can't pretend scripture. We've got to do what the Bible says. And when we out of line with the Bible, what do we have to do? Do we have just the Bible? We line back up. And when our doctrine is out of line with the Bible, do we adjust the Bible and cut it out, or do we just adjust the doctrine? <laughs> just the doctrine. You, you, you grow, you learn, say, oh, I get it now. And so and God gives us a chance to step up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right. So, and, 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 I, and I, I've told everybody, anytime you see me and I, and I make a mistake with the word, or, or, or you, say, well, you say, well, actually the Bible says this, and I misread it, you, you help me. Help me. Help me. You know, show me what God said, because that's what I'm interested. I'm not interested in what man said. I don't care who the man is. I'm interested in what God said. And man can man can line up all he wants or not line up. I'm going with the word. Amen. 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 I'm standing. I'm standing on the rock. I don't play favorites with nobody. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm for the Bible. No matter who you are, 
uh, 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 what your position is or uh, uh, what your title is, I'm for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet now. Amen. 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 All right. So let's understand the word. Let's understand it together. So uh, we were looking at verse. Uh, we covered a lot of background here. Let's, let's pick up in verse 18. Let's just read it real quick. Anybody? Verse 18. Romans 7, verse 18. Anybody? You said 7, 18? Yeah. Chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in me dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm. For to will it is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Time out. Is he talking about before salvation or after salvation? After. 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 That flesh is still with you after you got saved. The, 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 when you got saved, God did not make the flesh, the law of sin, leave your flesh. God did not make your flesh born again. Your, your body did not get born again. If you had a mole, you still got a mole. You had a broke leg, you still got a broke leg. Let's the Lord heals you. Your body is still the same. What happened was spiritual. You were spiritually reborn, spiritually reborn. Amen. So the Man. flesh is still the flesh. He's talking about, and, and, and I've heard, I've, I've heard holiness people try to get around this. So he's talking about when he wasn't saying, no, no, baby. Saved people still have to deal with the flesh. Right. Now, now, if, if come off your mics. I want to say amen if you agree. Saved people still have to deal with their flesh. Amen. 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 How saved you are, your flesh is still a mess. Amen. And you have to fast and pray and keep that flesh under control. Amen. And the hardest part of your flesh to control is your tongue. Amen. 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 Give God a hand praise. Amen. That's the book. That's the Bible. James told us that that was the hardest part. It's the tongue. Read. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, he's already told folk in chapter six, don't use this as an excuse to sin, right? He, before he gets to this part, he says, don't use grace as an excuse to sin. He says, how can we that are dead to sin living alone? We looked at that, chapter six, verses 12, particularly. Let not sin therefore ran your mortal body. So he's already told him, don't, don't be trying to act like you can't help it. He, he said, I'm not preaching so you can have the can't help it. You ought to have control over your body. Amen? Amen. You don't have in your body. Your body's a temple of the Lord now. Amen? Amen. But he's explaining why you have to fight. You can't just walk into the end zone here. The flesh is going to fight you. And, and so we, we looked at three classic enemies identified in scripture of the Christian. One is the flesh. It's ever present. It's always with you. The devil can't be in Sacramento and Oklahoma City at the same time. That's, that's hard for some people. They think the devil's everywhere. Let me say it again. The devil cannot be in San Francisco, California, and Oklahoma City, he can't. He's an angel. He's in one place or the other. Only God is everywhere at once. Satan is not like the twin of God that's evil. Satan is nothing like God. That's, 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 that's like saying uh, a, 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 a snail is like Mike Tyson in a fight. But, but, but the difference is only greater. Who would win a fight between Mike Tyson and a snail? You put the snail in the ring, you put Mike Tyson in there, who's going to win the fight? Who you put your money on? You, it, it's Tyson. no contest. It, it's, it's no contest, right? But the difference between Satan and God is even greater. We know Mike Tyson going to walk over this table and stand like, what's this? Right? And he'd have to throw a punch. The difference between Satan and God is greater than the difference between Mike Tyson and a, and a snail. God was, is, and is to come. God Ordered time, saw eternity, always was, always will be, knows the end from the beginning, speaks a thing, and it is, knows every thought of every person on this planet all at once, knows how many hairs are on my head, and knows how many pieces of grass in my yard, knows how many birds are in California, how many birds are going to cross the state line going to Oregon, and knows how many pieces of gravel are in my driveway, how many pieces of dirt are in my foot right now, and and, and not only that, when he gets tired of you being dead, he just raises you up. Satan is nothing like God. Nobody is like Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Hallelujah. God knows how many pieces Man. of salt are in your salt shaker. <laughs> Keep 
Can you imagine remembering every letter in the phone book, the yellow pages? Every letter and every page the letters on uh, page page in uh, page 592 has 6,000 letters on it. The 14th letter down is a J. The, the, the 237th letter down is an R. You can't do that. God knows every one of those things and all the books have ever been written. Hmm. And not only that, he knew the guy who was going to write the book before he was born. Say it ain't nothing like God. <laughs> it's a joke. When God said, I got all power, he got all power, all knowledge. Yes. It's, it's crazy. It'll blow your mind thinking about God. <laughs> the Bible says, behold, all things are open and naked to him with whom we have to do. Thank God we have to do with him. We're related to him. Amen. So Paul says here, I find uh, uh, now if I do that which I would not, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. The flesh is with me. That's how I got on this track. Satan can't be here with me and over at your house too. <laughs> you say the devil just can put it in his mind. No, the flesh put it in his mind. Now there are demons, lots of, lots of, you know, millions as far as we know of demons. They can be, you know, different places. But even that, that's a limited number. But only God is everywhere all at once. So a lot of times it's the flesh that's messing with you and putting stuff in your mind. That's why you have to keep your mind trained and focus on the right stuff. <coughs> and I like, like Julian's comment here, God even knows the future outside of time. <laughs> and, and I love what uh, Jelani said. Uh, I think it was Jelani. preaching one time, he said, God is in tomorrow. You know, we, we're waiting for tomorrow. God's already in tomorrow waiting on us to get there. <laughs> why? <laughs> because because he, he's in eternity. He is... He was, and he is to come. He's got all the tenses. That, that's why we don't understand God's use of tenses. We don't understand that. I have delivered them into your hands. They still charge into you with, with they charge it. Here's the army charging Israel with swords drawn and spears charging. And God says, I have delivered them into your hands. Lord, it sure don't look like it. They don't know it because they charging hard. God says, go. I've delivered them to your hands. God, it's already done. But sin when he says evil is present with me, it's not Satan, it's the flesh that's present with you. Everywhere you go, you take your body, right? Anybody leave the body at home when they go? You're going to say, you tell body, I'll be back. I'm just going to spirit. going to take a journey. No. That's why Paul says evil is present with me. It's in, it's in the flesh. This is what he's explaining here. Verse 21. Read it. Somebody. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. It's not the devil he's talking about. It's the flesh. Your flesh, your body's everywhere. Satan can't be here and be in Denton, Texas. He's not big and bad enough. Only God is in both places. And not only that, God is in Denton tomorrow. <laughs> he is in Denton tomorrow. That's, that's a tense thing that, you know, that, 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 that that's kind of how God does tenses. He calls those things to be not as though they were. And funny enough, they end up just the way God said they're going to be. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that cause the devil? Jesus said, not a bird falls to the ground apart from my father. God even knows when the cricket outside is going to die and gives his approval. <laughs> Satan ain't nothing like that. Verse 22. What time is it? Is it 830? It's 825. Okay, I got five minutes. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> verse 20. Verse 20 uh, uh, five minutes. Let's go. Verse 22. Sorry. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. After the spirit. The, the, the inward man is the spirit. Man is body, soul, and spirit. Your body's the outside. Your spirit is, is inside. That's the breath of life. God breathed into you. God breathed in man the breath of life, the pneuma. Ruah in the Hebrew. God breathed into man. And that's the spirit of the man. That's the breath of life. The spirit is the spirit. As a matter of fact, the only way you die is the spirit separates from the body. The breath of life in you is the spirit. That's the spirit in you. So you have man is a spirit. First, that's first Thessalonians, first Thessalonians 5.23, real quick. Four minutes and count. First Thessalonians 5.23, real quick. Bible drill. Somebody find it and read it. And I, I want the saints to go back through this one, this lesson again. 
uh, be on Zoom and Facebook. Just go back through it slowly. It's, this is this this so much in Romans, and it gives us an understanding of the Bible. First Thessalonians five twenty three. Read it. And the, very, the very God of peace sanctify very God of you peace, holy. Sanctify you holy, completely. Read. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul your spirit, and body. Your whole spirit and soul and soul and body and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul says, I pray that God sanctify you wholly, completely. I pray that your whole spirit soul and body say it with me spirit 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 soul 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 and body and, and body. body okay so so that's what man's made of man's god breathed into man the breath of life that's the spiritual part of man that's the part that got born again the outward man is the flesh the body the inward man's the spirit in between the spirit and the body is the soul that's your mind your emotions, your will, your personality. That's a part that makes the decisions. When the Holy Spirit inside your spirit says, don't do that. Amen. And the flesh says, oh yeah, well, I'm going to show them who I am. They don't know who they're fooling with. Your mind has to decide whether it listens to the flesh or the spirit. Galatians 5.16. We've been there a bunch of times. Get it real quick. Galatians 5.16. Real quick. Somebody read it. I'm running out of time. Galatians 5.16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Read. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Therefore, your mind has to be in position to make a decision. The flesh wants to do one thing, the Holy Spirit says to do another. Your mind has to be trained. Your mind has to be renewed. Your mind has to be transformed. You work on your mind. Guard your mind. Guard your heart with all diligence. Get that mind ready to make a decision. I'll come back to Romans. Start at verse 22. Why delight in the Lord? Okay. Go to 22. 22, huh? Read 22. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Pause. The spiritual man, that spirit, my Holy the, the Spirit, my spirit, I delight in the law of the Lord. Read. But I see another law in my members. My body. Warring, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now the flesh fights and tries to control the mind and bring it into captivity. So the flesh is constantly saying, no, I want to do this. I want to look. I want to, I, I don't want to fast. I want to eat. I don't want to go to church. I want to watch TV. I want to take the day off. I don't want to get up and do, do work. I want to just lay here. The flesh is, the flesh wants to be dominant. The Holy Spirit said, get up, baby, and get this done. And the body said, no, I'm just, I just want to lie here. And you, there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. And your mind, your mind is where the war is taking place. The flesh is saying to the mind, do this, say this. And the Holy Spirit is saying, don't. Don't say that. Don't do that. And your mind has to make a difference. And sometimes, as Paul explains in 23, the flesh wins. As a result of the flesh winning, the law of sin, read verse 23 one time, sweetheart. We're almost done. We're going to 25 and stop. 23, read one. 23 again, baby. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Sometimes when you're using your cell phone, stuff pops up. Junk pops up. They know how to get people. I, for the first time ever, I tried to get on Facebook this month. I got me a little account set up so I can buy and sell some stuff. Got a little business enterprise I want to try. And you know, the out of the first 18 things that popped up, I want to say nine of them were half-naked women saying, you can see more if you subscribe. I don't know how you kids are making it. In my day, if you wanted to see naked women, you had to go to a bookstore and put, you know, put on a hat and fake mustache so people wouldn't see you coming out of there. I ain't never went that route. People wouldn't see you coming out there. You know, and, and 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 all that stuff. But here in today's day, it just popped up on my phone. 
And not on that, you're sitting there looking at that thing. I <laughs> see Julia. You're sitting there looking at that thing, and you know, you know you need to click off of it. You're sitting there, and the flesh is saying, well, it ain't going to hurt to look a little longer. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm talking from experience. When that thing popped up, and I looked at it, I said, I can't believe this. Now I'm, and now I'm saying, I can't believe it. Now it's time to click on, move on, right? I had to make myself slide down. The flesh wanted to look. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I, I'm, I'm the only one that had this experience. Am I, I'm preaching myself. I had to make myself scroll past that. Uh-huh. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> And I'm like, my goodness. So I got to the next ad, blah, 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 blah. But I'm scrolling down and Facebook is just sending me stuff because I said I was a male when I signed up. So they sent me the women. And do you know out of the first 18 things that Facebook sent me, nine of them were half naked women saying, subscribe here. You can see all you want to see. And so I turned that thing off. I'm off Facebook. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got to deal with the devil. I, I ain't got to. I ain't got to go there and, and win every time. Yeah, I won. I won. I didn't click on none of them. But I ain't going to fight that fight every night. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I am not going to fight that fight every night. I'm off the Facebook. Amen. Come on. Get, come, amen. Up. come on. Come up there. Come up there and say amen if you, if you think I'm right about it. If, if, if we say if we say amen. amen, does that mean we have to get off Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm okay. just saying I'm, I'm, okay, right to, I'm, I'm right to get off. I'm right to get off. I'm, I'm saying I was right to get off. I'm not going to fight that fight every night. I came out 9-0. and yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm 9-0. and 0. I didn't click on none of them. Yeah, I'm 9-0. But trust me, I ain't going back in there trying to go 18-0. and 0. <laughs> No, sir. No, sir. Brother Laird is done. You know, so my point is this. So you look at that phone, and, I, and I'm t- and I literally have to tell this the flesh say, "Well, it ain't gonna hurt to just look, you know, just there, you know, isn't that amazing?" No, uh, uh, uh-uh, uh, that's the flesh, you know. This time to click off, time to turn the phone off, put it down. The flesh is present with you, and no matter how saved you are, saints, you have to fight. Amen. 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 So, I, I, so my my track record at Facebook is nine and zero, and I'm done. I'm, I tell you, I'll never be ten and zero. I'll never be eleven. 0. I'm done. Because <laughs> okay. I'm not going back from it. So the flesh is present. The flesh, so evil is present with me. So Paul says this in verse 24. Verse 24. Give me verse oh, 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Uh-huh. Shall deliver me from the body of this death. He says, This is wretched. This, this body wants to do crazy stuff that I know is not right. Your body wants to do crazy stuff. Your eyes want to look at stuff that's not right. Your, your tongue wants to say stuff that's not right. You want to slap somebody. You want to do stuff that's not right. You want to act a fool for once. Oh, wretched man, I just ain't right. You ever, you ever done something? Said, Who, what was that? I can't believe I did. I can't believe I said it. I can't believe I went off like that. Mm-hmm. Flesh won that battle. He says, this is, oh, wretched man, who should deliver me from this body? I'm trapped in this body. This body wants to do wrong. Then what does he say? Verse 25, talk to me. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God not only raises the dead, God not only conquered death and hell, God fixed the sin problem. The same God yes. that raised up Lazarus from the dead, that said, destroy this temple in three days, I raised it up, said, I can even deal with your sin nature problem. I can deal with that law of sin. I thank God I've been delivered from this body through Jesus Christ. He has freed me from the law of sin and death. He's freed me from the penalty of sin, from the guilt of sin. It's not that I, 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 I can't sin no more. I'm not, I don't, I don't, when I sin, I don't have to pay the penalty. He died for that sin. I don't wallow in it. I don't try to do it. But if the Bible says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus delivered me from the penalty and guilt and the punishment associated with sin. Amen. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now give me verse Eight, uh, uh, chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now, thanks to Jesus, no <laughs> condemnation, no judgment to them who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's been blood washed. Your sin's been paid for. Yeah, the devil made you do it, 
But guess what? You don't have to pay the price for it's already paid. You just confess that thing, get up, and keep on walking and serving God. You've been delivered from the wretchedness of this body through Jesus Christ our Lord. But if the blood of bulls and goats worked in the Old Testament, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you, save you, yes. keep you, wash you, deliver you, make you righteous, make you accepted in the blood? Amen. We have peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin I would ever commit has been bought and paid for. Jesus was punished for it. Yes. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Period. My Lord bore my sins and I owe him everything. How much do I owe him everything? I want to live for him now and just tell him thank you. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. There's therefore now no judgment, no kind of crema to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let's read verse two together, and I'm turning back over to the MC. Oh, the pastors, and then the ministers. I'm sorry. Thank you, baby. Verse two. Look at verse two. We're finished here. Let's read together. Everybody got a King James. Give you a second to get it. It might sound a little different because of time in here, but let's everybody read together. Romans 8, verse 2. I thank God for this book. Thank God for Romans. Thank God for Romans. Thank God for Romans. Everybody got it? Verse 2. Verse 1 says, There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2, everybody together. For the law of sin. I'm no longer under sin and death because I ain't got no sin. Why? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all. <laughs> I ain't got no sin. Yeah, but you messed up yesterday. But guess what? I ain't got no sin. Christ died for it. I have the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm free. Y'all don't understand it. I'm free from the law of sin. God's not going to hold me accountable for my sins. He punished Jesus for them. I'm free. Y'all ain't following me. I'm free from the law of sin and death. I will never have to pay the penalty and punishment and guilt for my sin. I'm free from that mess. Thank you, man. Jesus paid it all. All to him, my old. Yes. Every sin is covered. Every debt is paid. My name is the book of life. I have the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. I'm free from the law of sin and death. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Amen. Both the ministers, and then our pastors, uh, and then uh, back to the host. God bless you. Ministers are Robin, CJ, Jelani, uh, up and coming, Ray June, y'all ministers, and then our seasoned ministers, uh, evangelist, uh, Harp, uh, Mr. Harper, and evangelist um, Tyler, and then our pastors. And so um, y'all go in that order if you have any comments. If not, just say amen and we'll move on. Amen. 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 Okay, that's the young ministers. What about our seasoned ministers? Those have been in the way a while. Evangelist Tyler and uh, Mr. Harper. Praise the Lord. I enjoyed it to the uttermost. Uh, thank God for being saved. All right, now our pastors, Pastor John and Pastor Daryl. Hey man, uh, it's powerful. Woo, powerful. Uh, like like the way you finished, Trita. Uh, <laughs> um, God, God is good, and uh, and we are free. I mean, isn't that beautiful to be free? It's a beautiful thing to be free. Now, the beautiful thing is God didn't just free us, and now we're just frolicking around. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that once once you freed me from the bondage, He handed me a sword. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like that makes me so happy. Thank you. Like, 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 like he, he broke our chains. He set us free. And then he hands us a sword and allows us to go back in, you know, go back in the battle and just, you know, lay claim. <laughs> you know, I just, I just love, I just love how powerful this God is. So anyway, we are free. We Amen. are free. That's Amen. Daryl. <laughs> Amen. Beautiful lesson tonight. I, I certainly enjoy it. I just, uh, I was thinking, I hate breaking it up. You know, I wish we could just have a nice continuing her going on. Um, and so I, I love the fact that uh, you let your Lord use you to do it on Sundays and then on Wednesdays. And I think we'll probably get the eight. Well, we did get the eight tonight. I think we're really <laughs> getting there. It's just beautiful. I, yeah, I just, it's just such a such an edifying um, lesson as we go through Romans. I think clears a lot of things up that questions they didn't know we had. And it's just, um, just beautiful. Uh, it's just such a blessing, such a blessing, it's, and so needed, so needed. So, looking forward to more. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Praise the Lord! Um, such a beautiful lesson. Um, sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, if somebody could, if somebody could pray, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Can somebody pray us out, please? Gracious, you for just being free on to bring your words on for help us to hide it in our heart. I don't know if it's our connection, but we can't hear. I can't, I can't either. Lord, uh, the free family, Lord Jesus, those who are looking for jobs, Lord Jesus. And Praise the Lord. We know that we stand in agreement with what what's being spoken. We know we stand in agreement. God hears. It. God hears it. It's, it's beautiful. We don't really even have to hear it. <laughs> the only one that matters hears it. So uh, we just stand in agreement. We know. We know. Uh, we know that what's going up forth, what's going up. So we stand in agreement. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 By the way, brother Carl sent his love to everybody. They moved him to. He had, came out of that surgery, okay, neck, spine, back, all that intact. He's starting to walk again. They moved him to a, a nursing facility, from PT to a nursing facility, and he just sent his love and thanks. He just thanks everybody for the prayers and the gifts. We took him some stuff in the name of the church and told him everybody was praying for him. And uh, Pastor Darrell and I went by and visited him, of course. And uh, he just he just meant so much. And he uh, uh, just sent his love to everybody and just said he really appreciate all the praying. I think he said he can feel it. Amen. Beautiful. Thank y'all for being a church of Amen. love. This is a this is a church of love. Y'all are y'all are loving believers. Y'all really are. Amen. Y'all are dismissed. Have a good night. Go with God. Amen. Amen.